Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Whispers and Gentlemen. So, flick the lights off, sit down in your comfortable chair, and have a glass of your favorite drink as we dive on into it. What color are the walls? My corpse child. $10,000 to anyone who can correctly tell us what color the walls are. That's what the sign said. The white sign with big black letters. See, I can still tell you what color that is. I could tell you that, as well as the color of the building the sign was plastered over. A very dingy gray that was about as depressing as the cloudy sky was when I saw it that day. I can still remember how gray everything was around me. Like if all the color was engulfed by a gray, depressing hue of the overcast. I remember these things. These colors. I know they stayed the same. But that room. I, I truly don't know anymore. For God's sake. I don't even know if I'm even in the real world anymore. Or if I'm still somehow in that damn room. It's only been a few hours now since I participated in the experiment. It was a day a week ago when I first saw the sign. I was walking home from another day essentially wasted behind my desk at the office, typing out budget plan after budget plan just to make sure that glorified chimp in a three-piece tux would finally quit cracking his bullwhip over me about the number is not being satisfactory or not enough profit being ground up from this. Or some happy horse shit like that. Mr. Ivan. Ivan the Ape. Or Monkey Ivan. That was what a few bold and rather hyper pissed off co-workers called him behind his back. It wasn't the color of his skin. His ghoulishly pale albino skin that earned him this nickname. Funny enough. No. It was the way in which the bastard didn't seem to know how to use anything nearer than Windows XP much less run the company of an inspiring tech brand. Yet, he'd still beat his chest in a huff if every little detail wasn't to his liking. Just imagine an albino Donkey Kong in a suit, and you'd have just about an accurate enough picture of Mr. Ivan. Anyway, I say this to say that my day was already circling the drain as usual, and the way things are going, I didn't figure it would be long before he or corporate one, found out some way to cut me loose. That's, of course, when I found the sign. The big white sign with the big, bold black letters. At first, I was confused as hell. Ten grand just to guess the color of the walls? My mind was going through every possibility of there being some kind of catch, as well as what guessing the color of the rooms even meant. Was it some sort of game where the rooms would be covered by curtains? and you'd have to guess which one would be which color. None of it made sense. But, I guess an easy 10,000 in my situation must have been too good of a deal to pass up when I went inside. That's like I said earlier. The building was depressing, colorless, on the outside. The inside, on the other hand, was the polar opposite. For the first 30 feet or so of the walls, of the narrow corridor were like one of those blended color spectrums you'd see on paint programs. As they went on, I saw them twist into different patterns similar to a kaleidoscope. I guess the first weird thing I noticed, or at least the first overly strange thing, was the way in which the colors on the walls sort of morphed into new designs. What I mean by this is that for so long, the walls were one specific way and would be very subtly sort of molded in a way you probably wouldn't notice at first. By the time your brain does catch on that, hey, something's different here, you're now wondering if the walls weren't like that the entire time. I know that's how it was for me anyways. It must have shown too because the next thing I knew... I was snapped from a daze by a man wearing a purple button-up and khaki slacks. Strange, isn't it? The effect of the colors. He sounded excited when he asked this, like he'd been practicing for some big sales pitch based on this. Uh, <laughs> sure. If you say so. He stifled a giggle of his own as he watched me steal about two more glances at the walls. 
I heard him sigh in an almost condescending manner and put his arm on my shoulder, making it look like we were two art buffs gawking at Renaissance paintings in a studio. Yes, sir. You'd be surprised how much color has an effect on our lives. More specifically, on our minds. Hell, without color, well, I'd say we all go just stark raving nuts. <laughs> He ended his little pitch with an excited chuckle. But then again, he continued, what if color itself could just make you go nuts, huh? I mean, think about it. Color gives dimension to the world. Color is what makes everything around us recognizable, you know? Without it, nothing would have any features or definition to it. Everything would be all unrecognizable or inconceivable without color. I just nodded, looking like a bobblehead, while he railed on about the evolution of colors and their effects on the mind through history. Crap like that. Partly because of the utterly bizarre nature of the wall still holding my attention, as well as the guy's ramblings of sounding something like a college professor would spout at a seminar, I paid little to no attention to what the hell he was saying. Yeah, 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 Picasso. We get it. Color is the secret of life. Or whatever. I joke, but looking back now, I might have been more prepared for the shit I'm in knee deep in now if I had paid better attention. Finally, I was snapped from another daze when I felt him clap me on the back saying, Yes, sir. Color has shaped our world. But now back to my earlier question. What if there were no color? What would you see? What would you do in the absence of color? I shrugged. Uh, I, I don't know. His hyper-enthusiastic grin widened almost painfully and his big brown eyes widened, fully exposing the small red veins around them. Well, how would you, sir, like to find out? I just stood there, frozen, not really sure what I was supposed to say. Being completely honest here, I was so utterly mindfucked with everything in that moment that, despite wanting nothing more than to haul ass out of this little bizarro funhouse, I just couldn't seem to move, or speak, or even think straight for that matter. Fortunately, I guess, his question didn't seem to require an answer because he immediately launched into his pitch about this experiment they're doing to test the minds of stability in the absence of color. Our hypothesis, he stated, is that in an environment devoid of colors, shapes, or anything, you won't be able to tell what's real anymore. Hence our pitch, 10 large, to the first person to prove this hypothesis false. I look stupidly at him. So, basically, it's a sensory deprivation? I suppose you could look at it that way. Pretty mild way of saying it, in my opinion, but to each their own. Well, how else am I exactly supposed to look at it? He just continued grinning, looking almost maniacal now. As a test, sir. This ultimate test of both your senses as well as your mind. Did you see just how far it can be stretched with literally no stimuli at all? He then winked and asked, What do you say? With almost no thought, I scoffed and told the guy to blow it straight out his ass before striding towards the door I came from. I was about four feet from the door when he called up to me, stopping me. Wait! He said, thrusting his hands into my chest. I saw it was a little silver business card reading in big bright blue letters. Brainstorm LLC where only the mind grants you power. Just consider it. I stuffed the card in my pocket and pushed my way past him out the door. I walked the rest of the way to my apartment. I'll bet with a more agitated and nervous stride. My mind was swimming all night with the whole thing robbing me almost completely of sleep and continuing still into the next morning. Because of this, I was barely functional at work. 
What was worse was that it was the due date for the quarter three sales reviews, which in turn earned me a grade A ass chewing by my old mucky Ivan. In the end, I was told to go home early that day and told not to come back for another five days. Unpaid leave. Great. Fan frickin' tastic. Now I'm out half my next paycheck. Still needing another 35 hours for my salary. Plus, I was going to try and gun for some overtime. Oh, fucking well. So, there I was, sitting in my apartment, wishing I could down a few shots and lose myself to blissful inebriation. Just to my luck, I had no more jack, and being stiffed on my next paycheck, I figured it'd be my best move to try and hold tight to what I had, despite how much I needed some kind of relief. Oddly though, much of my thought was still trapped in the whole colors situation. I can't explain it, but I found myself actually thinking more and more about what the guy was going on about. How color gives the definition to everything around us. How color being the way in which we can perceive the world around us. Don't get me wrong. The guy was a complete nut job. Straight out of the wacky shack. But still, something about the ways he was saying it at the time made me legitimately wonder what would it be to be in a room with nothing at all. No colors. I heard it before about sensory deprivation and how it causes people to panic, but what exactly do they see? Would it be real? How much so? I found myself wondering exactly which aspect it was that triggers the senses of paranoia in such instances. Of course, this would ultimately get thrown in with the overarching issue of I need money and quick, and the next thing I knew. I was uncrumbling the card from my pocket and calling the number listed under the blue letters. I was scheduled for a screening the following morning, which was basically just me filling out paperwork and waivers so I couldn't run to the law if shit went down south during the experiment. They also debriefed me as to what the experiment was and what I would be doing. Essentially, they rehashed what the guy in the hallway the previous day described it being. A test to see whether or not long-term deprivation of color, as they frequently termed it, would cause me to lose perception of what was real. They told me that my part in this was to simply stay in a certain room for about three days, and at the end they would ask me what color the walls were. If I could answer it correctly at that time, then I would be taken home ten large that day. I won't lie here. I actually had to ask if these people were high as hell. $10,000 just to sit in a room for a few days and then tell them what the color the fucking walls were? Tell me that doesn't sound far too good to be true. Sure enough though, they were dead serious about it. I asked if there would be any sort of gas or injections they'd be using on me or if there'd be any kind of sounds they'd play to stir up any kind of effects. Nope. Nothing. In fact, they reiterated how the purpose was to see what would happen without any sort of stimuli. Just complete, silent solitude for five days, memorizing the color of the walls. Even though this sounded like the easiest and most money I'd ever make in my life, I was still a bit hesitant to actually go through with it. They made it all sound so easy. Too easy. In the end though, I told myself easy money was easy money, ludicrous or not. I was told to return the following Monday to begin the experiment and was expressly told not to bring any belongings with me. Just myself and the clothes on my back. For those next two days waiting anxiously to claim my easy win, I was immediately still anxious as to what was going to happen during that time. I'm sorry, but like I said, that's just too easy. There had to be some kind of catch here. Catch or not, though, first thing Monday morning there I was, standing in that trippy-ass tie-dye hallway in the Brainstorm LLC building. Well, hello there. Good to see you again. Greeted the guy from before, 
Are you ready to begin? Sure. Ready as I'll ever be. Keep calm. I told myself, just think of the ten grand. Excellent. He exclaimed with a childlike hyper-enthusiasm. Just follow me down the hall here and we'll get started immediately. We walked down the hallway and I noticed that the same effect from before where the further down I went and the longer I looked, the more I thought I saw the colors actually moving and shifting into different shapes, like the colors in the spectrum were alive. When we turned down another hallway, the same thing happened. Only this time, it was just black and yellow stripes going down. For whatever reason, maybe because of the actual colors themselves. Who knows? But I actually thought I saw forms of bumblebees buzzing around the wall. For just a second, I almost could have sworn I actually heard them too. I was starting to get weirded out and I didn't want to somehow fuck up my chance at the money, so I just shook my head and made sure to keep my eyes forward from that point on. And here we are, he said, reaching out to an open giant metal door. Inside was an empty blank white room. I had to squint my eyes going in from how bright it was. Or was it even lit? God, this is still confusing. This is where the experiment will take place. I looked around the room. The walls are huge at least 30 feet high and about 40 or 50 feet wide and seem to be fresh drywall. So, exactly what am I supposed to do in here again? Besides telling you the walls are white, his devious grin from before returned. Anything you wish, or nothing at all. Your part is just to remain in this room for the next five days and tell us what color the walls are at the end, and the money's yours. I looked confused at him. I just told you. They're white. Do I get the money now? Oh, just wait. <laughs> you may not have the same answer in five days. He said with an equally devious chuckle. Oh, what about food? Or if I need to use the bathroom? What do I do then? But by the time I managed to get that out, he had already, with a rather shitty and grin, shut the huge metal door. Great. Thanks. So, there I was, standing in the middle of an empty white room, all alone. So, now what? I was getting bored quickly, so I started feeling across the walls. Part of me wondered if I'd maybe find some sort of microphone or camera. I mean, they'd have to keep a watch over me somehow, right? For research or something. But nope, nothing. Like I said, just fresh drywall. Hey, can you hear me? Anyone? Nothing. Okay, so I guess they can't hear me. I tried this by shrieking and howling at the top of my lungs like a deranged hyena. Still, nothing. So, they can't see me and they aren't listening. But how are they experimenting then? How if they're not taking any sort of notes or anything like that? That's when I thought back to when they told me. All I had to do was stay in this room for three days. That's when I thought back to what they told me. All I had to do was stay in this room for three days and tell them that the walls were white. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it here. I took a deep breath. Just keep cool. Tell them the walls are still white. And that money is good as mine. Simple as that. I began fantasizing about the things I would do with all that money. I mean, that's at least three paychecks right there. And all just for telling these eggheads that the walls are white. I began pretending that I was making it rain and showering in the money. Why not? I already found out no one was watching. That's when the first weird thing happened though. It was while I was imagining fanning myself with the cash that I thought I could actually feel it in my hands. It was soft and thin, just like money paper. 
I opened my eyes and, of course, saw nothing. It was a little odd, but I figured I was just caught up in the moment. You know how that goes. You get so excited about something in your mind and your senses fixate on it, and all of a sudden, you think it's actually there, but really it's not. Well, I thought that's what it was at first. But then, for a brief instant, I thought I actually saw dollar bills raining down from the ceiling. I rubbed my eyes and looked again. Nothing. What the... Huh. I was confused. Where was the money? I mean, it was right there. Right in front of my face. Wasn't it? Oh, cut it out. Oh, there wasn't shit there and you know it. I yawned. I was getting tired, which I figured was probably why I thought I saw the money coming from the ceiling. That made sense. I mean, I'd been in the room for God only knows how many hours with literally nothing to do. Boredom was making me tired, which then made me think I saw more money falling from above. Yeah, that's all it is, boredom screwing with your head. Just shut your eyes for a while and everything will be just fine. I laid down and surprisingly the floor was actually comfortable. It was almost as soft as the red satin sheets on my bed back home. In almost no time at all I was falling asleep. Just before my eyes closed however, I could have sworn I saw a giant wave of red take up all the floor. I was asleep before I could give it any further thought. I don't know how long I was out. Felt like I'd slept for the remainder of the experiment. When I woke up though, you guessed it white walls. I tried going back to sleep, but no luck. The floor didn't feel soft anymore. If anything, I felt uh, concrete almost. Out of instinct, I felt around the floor and the walls. They all now felt rough and of course like they were made from cement. Then, the more I looked at them, the more I noticed that they looked more grayish now, as opposed to their original blinding white. But, but how? I rubbed my eyes and looked again, white again. For about a solid five minutes, I just stood there staring at the wall. What's going on here? I did just see that, right? That wall was just gray, right? But how? How were the walls gray? The walls can't just change color like that. Or can they? I shook my head. Of course they can't. Stop being stupid. Walls can't change color. Though I told myself this, another thought sent my thoughts further into a frenzy. What if the color of the walls didn't actually change at all? What if they were actually gray the entire time? Maybe I was just imagining the whole time that they were white. Look, I get it. The illusions of money falling from the ceiling and the soft satin colored floor were one thing. I could write those off. No problem. Just... My mind's playing tricks on me because of exhaustion and boredom. But this wasn't as easily passed off. I mean, think about it. White and gray aren't that different, right? Both are lighter colors, gray just being the combination of white and black, of light and dark. Could the walls actually be gray? I looked around again and saw that the wall still was white. I felt them again still feeling like common drywall. At least that's what I thought drywall at the moment was supposed to feel like. That was another thing. How in the hell was I feeling things that weren't there? Again, I know some of it could have just been in my head, but why or how was that in one moment? The walls felt so soft and smooth, and the next they're completely different? Unless, of course, I was only imagining that it was the drywall to begin with. I started rubbing my temples, feeling the onset of a headache. Fuck, man, this is ridiculous. You gotta seriously cut this shit out. The walls are white, and you know it. I decided to just keep repeating this over and over, like a mantra. The walls are white. The walls are white. The walls are white. The walls are white. Eventually, I started feeling hungry. Hey, uh, how are we doing lunch? I'm kind of getting hungry in here. I knew no one was going to answer having already established that they aren't listening. But I didn't know what else to do. I started imagining the taste of a thick, tender, juicy steak burger with a large side of fries. I thought of 
how the medium rare beef would steam my taste buds with that generous dousing of barbecue sauce. Then there it was in my hands. A soft, juicy steak burger complete with a garlic toast bun that's been baked to a perfect golden brown. For a moment, I just stared at it. My head was now spinning. Where the hell did this come from? How the hell did it get here? The pain of hunger quickly overruled logic, though, and I took a huge bite out of the sandwich, or at least what I thought was a sandwich. Only after a sharp pain shot through me that I, I just realized I'd bitten through my hand and not a steak burger. Uh, my hand was in a lot of pain and I was starting to bleed. Now I was starting to get pissed. What the fuck was going on? How was I seeing shit? Shit that I knew damn well wasn't there. And the walls? Why are they changing colors? They're supposed to be white. There wasn't any food. There's no cash raining from the ceiling. There was no soft satin floor and then the fucking walls were white. Weren't they? I looked again, now seeing tiny black dots covering them. Now I knew something was up. Those definitely weren't there before. Though, this did make me rethink my conclusion that they weren't watching me. Could these dots be cameras? That would have made sense. Except how come I didn't notice them before? Even if they were hidden in the walls, I should have been able to fill them or something through the thin drywall. But then again, that's assuming that this was even actual drywall. When I reached out to touch one of the dots, my eyes damn near shot from their sockets when I saw them begin to move like a swarm of ants as my fingers passed across the wall, some of them crawling up my arm. But that wasn't possible, was it? Dots can't move. When I jerked away though, the dots were still again, like they never moved. They didn't move though, right? Dots can't move. Then again though, there were no dots either. The walls were white, blank, no dots, no satin floor, no money falling, just white. The walls are white, the walls are white, the walls are white. Eventually this droned in my head so much that I was once again feeling sleepy. Like before, I was out before my head touched the floor, though this time the ground was still rough and coarse instead of soft like it was before. Also, I faintly remember seeing the tiny black dots moving again, swarming frantically around me slowly trying to get closer and closer. I wasn't asleep long. I remember dreaming that the dots were crawling all over me like a mound of fire ants burrowing in every orifice that they could find. I felt them everywhere, inside and out. Eventually I was blinded when they began scuttling inside my eyeballs and I began choking, suffocating as more of them stuffed themselves down my throat. I woke up screaming, almost bolting straight to my feet and started feeling myself all over. No ants, no black dots, or whatever the hell they were. I stood in the middle of the room, breathing heavily, to, uh, trying to regain my bearings on the area around me, trying to make sure I was really was only dreaming. Of course, it didn't help now. Somehow, the dots were gone. Now were replaced by micro-thin black lines. By now, I was beyond trying to rack my fucking head on whether or not the dots had actually been the lines the whole time. Hell, by then I was almost convinced that that was how the room had always been. White, or was it gray? With thin black strands that looked like a piano wire. But that still brings me back to the earlier question. Why hadn't I seen any of this before? Why do I know this is actually how the room was from the beginning? I mean... I saw the fucking room. I remember the color of the fucking walls being white. Don't I? I closed my eyes and began straining to remember the way the room looked when I first went in. Large, blank, white, gray. Fuck! I couldn't even tell anymore if the walls were white or gray. Moreover, I couldn't really be sure they were actually blank. Maybe the dots, strands. Whatever had been there from the get-go, maybe it was like the walls in the hallway. How I thought the tie-dye color walls were shifting, but actually weren't. That would make sense. And maybe the reason I thought the dots were ants was because that, that was the color I associated with ants. 
basically I pictured ants when I first saw the tiny dots and so my mind made me think the dots were actually moving just like how I thought the floor was soft because I was imagining I was in my bed and because I was hungry I imagined my tan skin hands being the toasted bun of a sandwich color is what makes everything around us recognizable you know I was finally beginning to understand it I finally started understanding why the challenge was to tell them what color the walls were. But with this, I realized I wasn't really sure what color they were to begin with. Were they white? Were they blank? Was all that the illusion the entire time? Do they even know what fucking color the walls are? My breathing started to get heavier and heavier, feeling like I was being strangled. The next thing I knew, I saw two strands of coil around my neck, tightening like a noose. I began clawing at my throat, trying to pry them loose to no purpose. Soon, my vision began to blur and I was only able to let out a strained wheezing. I closed my eyes and started repeating over and over in my head. They're just lines. They're just lines. They're just lines. They're just lines. Finally, I, was, I felt like I was able to breathe again. Opening my eyes, the room was like it was before. White, maybe gray, with long thin strands, maybe dots. That's when I began laughing. It wasn't a haha funny shit laugh or even a laugh of, of relief. It was a laugh of one whose mind had been bent and twisted every which way until it finally snapped like a twig. I couldn't take it anymore. This room, the experiment, colors all of it I just couldn't take this mind fuck anymore I didn't even care about the money anymore I just had to get the fuck out of here without thinking I bolted up to where the door was or thought it was when I began trying to pry at the cracks of the doorway I realized that my fingers weren't grabbing anything simply just brushing the thin black strands going down the wall where's the door it was right here wasn't it where's the fucking door then again, I began thinking, had that been where the door was? Was there even a door at all? That was when I truly lost it. I began driving my head into the wall as I screamed, let me out of here, let me out. Eventually, I finally blacked out again from the constant trauma. When I woke up again, God only knows how much later, I was in what looked like a VIA hospital room. It was dark. I didn't see anyone, so I guessed it was nighttime. My head was still fuzzy and everything was still blurred, filling around. I found that I was lying in a soft bed with thin white linen covering my legs. In my pocket, I pulled out the crumbled up Brainstorm LLC card. On the back were the words, Thank you for participating in the latest Brainstorm LLC experiment. Everything was quiet. It wasn't even a beeping of an EKG machine. How did I get here? Slowly, everything started coming back to me. The lines, the dots, the money falling from the ceiling, the soft floor, the walls. That's when panic struck me like a knife. The walls. The experiment. What happened? Was it over? Did I pass? Or did I fail? How the hell did I even get out? I am out of the room, right? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know anymore. Am I out of the room? Am I actually in the hospital right now? Or am I just seeing what my mind is telling me? Or what I can guess the colors are telling me is the hospital room? I don't even know if this phone I'm typing this on is real. I mean, it's a white iPhone. Or at least that's what I'm seeing it as. But... Is it actually a phone? How do, how do I know it's just not something from the room again? I need help. Please. If this is real, if I'm actually in the real world again, somebody tell me. Somebody give me a sign, anything, to prove that I'm not in that room anymore. God. I don't even know what colors the walls are. I don't even know what color anything really is anymore.